Welcome to Exhibition and Xbox Podcast, episode number 77. My name is Samuel Adams, and on today's show, Pentiment is looking to be a big hit for Team Xbox, with glowing reviews nearly across the board. We'll dig into the ratings, and if you should check this game out, Spoiler alert, if you have Game Pass, you absolutely should. On top of that, Remedy has confirmed they are making a full-fledged sequel to Control, and we have an Xbox Series S holiday bundle on the way that brings together some great in-game rewards for some of the biggest free-to-play games, and we'll talk about why that's a big deal for Team Xbox. We have plenty more to discuss as well, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's start off today's show with Pentiment. This is the newest game from Obsidian Entertainment, and it surely is one of the biggest Xbox games of the holiday season, and it's pretty much the only Xbox game of the holiday season. This is launching on Xbox One, Series X and S, and PC, and currently it's sitting at an 86 on Metacritic with 35 positive critic reviews, three mixed, and zero negative. Now that could change as more reviews are dropping, but it's looking like a phenomenal first impression for Pentiment. Now, this is somewhat of an experimental game for Obsidian. You know, a lot of people see Obsidian and they think about the Outer Worlds. They think about Grounded. Uh, they think about, of course, Fallout New Vegas. And this game is much smaller in scope. This is more of an experimental title where effectively you are playing this living, breathing book. And that's what the official game's description actually says, where they say, step into the living illustrated world inspired by illuminated manuscripts and printed woodcuts in a time when Europe is at a crossroads of great religious and political change. So, if you see Obsidian and you think, oh, this is going to be a first-person action game or something like that, that's not exactly the case. Not really an RPG, so to speak. It's just something that's new, something that's fresh. But it seems like people are absolutely enjoying it. However, not every review is glowing. We start things off over at GameSpot, where they give it a 6 out of 10, but then you go over to IGN, where it gets a perfect score, a 10 out of 10, and Liana Hafer writes, Pentiment is a clever medieval detective story with a gorgeously realized world that I can hardly recommend highly enough. So, reviews are scattered throughout those two extremes, 6 to a 10 as it stands right now, but for the most part, uh, looking through the Metacritic reviews, you're looking at uh, just a whole screen full of 100 hundreds whenever I'm landing on the page, then you hit 90s, plenty of 90s, plenty of high 80s. So this is certainly looking to be like one of the biggest and most successful game launches uh, that Xbox has had for a first party game this entire year. And this one does have a lot going for it. So number one, it's 20 bucks. You know, in a world where $70 games have become the norm, a $20 budget title is going to make this much more appealing, especially since it kind of breaks the mold of what people expect from Obsidian. But on top of that, this is also going to be included in Xbox Game Pass on day one. That, of course, is the big draw of Microsoft growing uh, their Xbox Game Studios family. Because while you can launch games on other platforms, like I'm thinking about the upcoming uh, Minecraft game that's coming out, you can do that wherever you want. But you can also make it much more appealing to play via Game Pass because it's included with your subscription. So Pentiment is available on PC, it's available on Xbox, and of course, it's included on Game Pass on both. So if you have ultimate you can play wherever you want this is one that I'm going to check out. I know in my close network of other podcasters and content creators, uh, it seems like this is one that some people are passing on. They start playing it. It's not for them. They go ahead and put it to the wayside. So that very well may be what uh, happens with me in my playtime with it as well. Uh, but I also saw a lot of people saying the same thing about As Dusk Falls, and that became one of my favorite games of the year. Uh, so it all depends on the narrative for me, and I don't want to get too much into what Pentiman is, because if you want to get in and just have a blind playthrough. I don't want to ruin that for you. Uh, but this is one that I think is catching my eye. I'm not a huge fan of the art style myself, but I appreciate it, you know, kind of in the same way that I appreciate Octopath Traveler. Uh, just not really my cup of tea, but I understand what it's trying to do. So I'm going to give this one uh, the old college try. I think that it's cool to see a big studio like Obsidian experimenting with something and not being forced into a box of what it's expected to be. 
And if you look at how Xbox is treating Obsidian as a studio, uh, you're getting some projects that break the mold. You have, of course, Grounded. You have Pentiment now. And at the same time, you do have Avowed, which is somewhat of what we would expect from Obsidian. So there is the, uh, you know, kind of pin in the cushion of, yes, we are still doing this, but there's enough freedom within the company to where if somebody has a good idea, they pitch it, it gets greenlit, and it is being able to be published on Xbox primarily because of Game Pass. And this is something that was uh, made public out back in August, where Game Pass does open up the availability to experiment more on titles and throw some variety in there. Uh, whereas traditionally, a studio like Obsidian financially may be forced to work on something that is proven to pay the bills, that is proven to be a hit. And so therefore, you get kind of trapped again in this box of you know, stuff that you are expected to do versus what you actually have a passion to do. And I'm a firm believer when it comes to games that whenever developers are making something that they have a passion for, uh, whenever they're working on ideas that they are passionate about, the end product ends up becoming something that is much better than something where you're just forced to work on a project that has no relevance to you and your personal interest or your goals. So, it's nice to see that there's a balance being struck between the experimental projects and the big AAA expectations that I think we all have for Xbox and for Obsidian. That being said, that's all great, that's well and good. When it comes to 2023, it is definitely time for Xbox to up the ante because when you have a holiday season like we have right now, you look at the competition. You put Xbox and PlayStation up head to head. You have God of War Ragnarok on PlayStation 5, which is also getting plenty of 9s and 10s out of 10s. And you look, and Pentiment is also getting 10s out of 10s, 9s out of 10s, and that kind of thing. But in terms of the experience you're getting, it would be nice to have a Starfield. It would be nice to have an Avowed. It would be nice to have something that is at least comparable in terms of the experience you're getting on a scale level uh, to the competition. And Xbox just doesn't have that once again for 2022. Halo Infinite was the big game for 2021. Of course, that was kind of the big holiday hit. Uh, but at the same time, that was kind of short-lived. So it's definitely high time uh, for Xbox to go ahead, buckle down, get some of these games out the door. And I think between Redfall and Starfield coming next year, along with plenty of other projects that are on the way, I do think it's going to be a much better year for Team Xbox. But as a budget title, as something that's experimental, it's nice to see Xbox rounding out the year on a high note with something that many critics are enjoying across the industry. So if you dive into Pentiment tomorrow, I would love to hear your thoughts on it once you've had time to kind of dig in, enjoy it for yourself. Leave your comments down below. Do you think you're going to enjoy it? And if you've played it, are you? Control 2 is officially in development. Remedy Entertainment made the announcement over on their Twitter channel on November the 11th, where they write, We have signed an agreement with 505 Games to co-develop and co-publish Control 2, a sequel to Control, and you can read the entire announcement over on their blog. Uh, but in short, this is again being co-developed and co-published with 505 Games, with 505 handling the console release and Remedy self-publishing the game on PC. That's pretty much where the details end. This game is still in the very early stages of planning, so you'll probably see it 2024, maybe 2025 at the very earliest, but it's nice to see an official sequel is on the way. And I think that a lot of people were kind of holding their breath because for a while the rumor was that there was a multiplayer game in development set in the world of Control, and it sounds like that concept has kind of evolved, more funding came through the pike, and now we have an official sequel to one of 2019's best games. And I would consider Control to be one of the sleeper hits of the last half of the last generation. Many people would say it's not even a sleeper hit, it was just great, uh, and it was a good way to kind of end off the PS4 and the Xbox One. Of course, shortly after the Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 launched, we saw Control Ultimate Edition, uh, which brought some next generation upgrades. And while the upgrade path itself to get that version of the game was a little bit convoluted, it was nice to see a bit of a performance bump along the way. One other detail here is that this is a big budget sequel. We're talking about $52 million, roughly, of initial development money, which means more is likely on the way. But to have $52 million to start development uh, seems like a pretty good head start towards making a good game. So I'm looking forward to learning more in the next few months and maybe even a couple of years from now. Uh, but whenever this game launches, I am sure it's going to be one of the best games of that year uh, because Control really just set the bar high when it comes 
comes to the puzzles, when it comes to the atmosphere, the music, everything about Control is very well done. So I know that Remedy Entertainment is certainly looking to have another hit on their hands. It's up to us to see if they can pull it off. Assassin's Creed Valhalla could be joining Xbox Game Pass soon. This news came via Game Pass counter over on Twitter, where they wrote on November the 11th, Assassin's Creed Valhalla was spotted on the Polish Xbox store as being a part of Game Pass. It could signify the game is set to join the service soon, and that very well could be the case. And it seems like the logical next step. You already have Odyssey, you already have Origins, it just makes sense to go ahead and throw Valhalla in there. Plus, the timelines do line up. It's been about a week and some change since the two-year anniversary of Valhalla when it launched alongside the Xbox Series X, S, and PlayStation 5. So potentially, maybe a contract has expired, maybe on the PlayStation side of things, where they could not put the game on a service for two years. I know maybe that's been the case for some other games as well. So Valhalla very well could be landing, and I think this would be a great addition. Uh, whenever the uh, new consoles launched, this is one of the games that I spent the most time with uh, because it was one of the only next gen games out at that point in time and it was great uh, it runs phenomenally well it looks gorgeous uh, some of those landscapes are unlike anything i've seen in a game to date so i hope the game does get added to game pass as many people as possible should absolutely be able to dive in and play that one plus again it would be nice to see all three of these games united on game pass you get origins you get odyssey and you get valhalla and there you have it the newest three games in the assassin's creed franchise so time will tell an announcement could be coming this week so stay tuned to wrap up today's show, a new holiday bundle is on the way for the Xbox Series S, and this is an incredible value for the entry-level gamer. For parents out there, this is going to be a no-brainer. The news came via Xbox Wire, where Bree Adams, the global product marketing manager, wrote that the new Xbox Series S Gilded Hunter bundle, including an Xbox Series S and a controller, a total of nine in-game cosmetics, plus virtual currency for Fortnite, Rocket League, and Fall Guys, is going to be launching for $2.99 on November the 29th. With the Gilded Hunter pack for Fortnite, they write, you don the Hunter Saber outfit, includes variant style, and prowl the island wielding Saber's Fang Pickaxe, includes variant style. Show your style with the Hunt Begins wrap and enjoy 1,000 V-Bucks to spend on your favorite items in Fortnite. Jumpstart your Rocket League garage with the Fennec Car, Huntress Decal, Orange Hex Phase Boost, Titanium Asto CSX Wheels, and 1,000 Rocket League credits that can be used to upgrade to Rocket League Pass Premium, build blueprints, or purchase most wanted content from the Rocket League's item shop. Lastly, dip, dive, duck, and dodge with the Gilded Hunter Pack for Fall Guys, featuring the Faltron Ultra Costume, Faltronic Emote, Faltronic Nameplate, and 1,000 show bucks to buy the Fall Guys Season Pass or favorite costumes, colors, patterns, emotes, and celebrations for your Fall Guy. Ready to play? Since you can download and play Fortnite, Rocket League, and Fall Guys for free with Xbox, you can get right into the action. So let's talk about everything you get here. You get $10 to spend in Fortnite, $10 in Rocket League, and $10 in Fall Guys, alongside unique cosmetics in each of those three games, which is a pretty impressive value. I mean, you're looking at basically about 50 bucks in additional value on top of the $299 console that you get normally. So that to the side, if you are somebody who values performance, your 4K 60 FPS where possible games, that is going to be an Xbox Series X. That is what you're going to want. But this is for the entry-level players. This is for the parents who are looking for a console for their 12-year-old, their 13-year-old, where all of their friends are playing Fortnite, Rocket League, and Fall Guys. This gives you access to all three of those games in the next-gen format because it is an Xbox Series S, so you do have next-gen games that are on the way and next-gen perks, but you also get some cosmetics. You also get some money to spend in the game. I mean, that's three season passes right there, three premium passes. That is a huge value for a parent. And so whether you're just somebody who likes to come home after a long day and you want to dig into some Fortnite, some Rocket League, or some Fall Guys, this is the bundle for you. If you're a parent looking for something to give your kid that isn't expensive, but that gives them access to all the hot games their friends are playing at school, this is the console for you. And that's not to say you're going to get a bad experience. If you want to play Halo, Forza, uh, Battlefield, Modern Warfare, whatever it might be, this can do it all. And it gives you everything 
and then some. And so for $2.99, this is by far the best value that I've seen this holiday season. Uh, I haven't seen any PS5 or Xbox Series X custom bundles at all. Uh, this looks to be the only one uh, that is being leveraged in this kind of way. And I think that provides an insane uh, benefit for Xbox this holiday season because people are going to want to save some cash. Things are tight right now. Inflation's through the roof. And so with a $299 console, this is a parent's dream, especially whenever you look and your kids are excited about it because you have all of these in-game currencies, some really cool looking skins. Uh, and so this makes me very, very happy. My question is, uh, once the Activision Blizzard deal is done in 2023, do we see an Overwatch addition to this bundle where you get Fortnite, Rocket League, Fall Guys and Overwatch 2 with some custom cosmetics and some in-game currency? That could potentially be the case. Maybe Warzone 2 gets in there. Who knows? I mean, the world is their oyster once that thing closes. But this is a great deal, again, launching November 29th. So let me know, is this something you would consider picking up for yourself? Are you looking to get one for a friend or family member this holiday season? I'd love to hear your first impressions down below. That wraps up this week's episode of Exhibition, an Xbox podcast. And I do hope you enjoy it. I apologize for the day late upload. Typically, the show lands every single Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, but I was on a work trip, didn't have time to record beforehand. So here we are rocking and rolling with some Pentiment reviews. I thought it was a pretty good time. But again, if you enjoy it, be sure to hit that subscribe button, add me to your podcast feed, and enjoy the show every single week. But until next time, you guys have a fantastic one. I'll talk to you soon. And remember, keep on playing.